All right, hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is uh, Ted. You can find me online in most places as Drenmi. Uh, I work for Tinkerbox, which is a local uh, Ruby on Rails agency. Uh, and I'm here to deliver the five random Ruby tips of, of this meetup. So for this time, I actually picked a theme. So I sort of broke my own rule there for five random Ruby tips. Uh, recently, one of our junior developers, Daniel, um, started a daily Ruby uh, kata session, which brought me back to a website which I registered for in, I think, 2013. One, th one thing this website does is when you sign up, you need to list your skills. Uh, and for reasons that are lost to me now, I listed uh, my skill as hiding things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the idea now is to, to help uh, anyone who has to work with me um, by presenti presenting five tips on finding things. Uh, and more specifically, finding things with active record, uh, because the reality is that uh, most of us doing Ruby full-time um, need to work with Rails, uh, and so we need to work with active record. Uh, but I'd like to point out that there's also a, a great gem called SQL. Uh, so if you have the time uh, to work on a pet project or something where you want to try something new, uh, I definitely recommend um, trying that out. So the first tip is uh, a new method in Active Record 5. And the way you know if you're using Active Record 5 is if you're using Rails 5, uh, then you're using it. Uh, so the, there's a new method uh, called left joins. Uh, and if you imagine a, an extremely simple uh, domain model where you have uh, a company uh, that has zero or more users, uh, and the user belongs to the company. Uh, and you want to query out companies based on some property of the users. You first need to join the user's table. Uh, but if you're familiar with SQL, the problem here is that uh, once you do join, any company that doesn't have any user uh, will be left out from the results. So say that you want to list all companies that uh, don't have a billing contact. Uh, you will miss out on all the companies that don't have any users at all, uh, which you might have wa actually wanted in your result. Uh, so you can see this is the SQL generated by uh, using just joins. And if you use left joins, it will replace the inner join with a left outer join. Uh, and this will give you the companies without users as well in your result. Uh, the second tip is also new for uh, Active Record 5. Uh, so they actually introduced the OR method. Previously, you could only you do OR by including a SQL fragment um, using a string with the actual SQL statement in it. And the way it works is uh, you can chain it onto your uh, relation, but you need to pass it another relation as, as the argument. You can't use um, uh, an options hash like you do to where, for example. And this might look a bit clunky, but there are good reasons for this. So the reason it took so long to, to get this seemingly uh, trivial feature uh, it's because once you start making more complex queries, there can be a lot of ambiguity of like, where does this OR actually end up and how are different ORs and ADs grouped together? So there were two or three pull requests made to Rails that were rejected to uh, implement OR with the options hash uh, until someone actually suggested that let's just do OR and you can pass it a, a relation. Um, and the SQL that's generated from this looks uh, similar to this. So it just chains the OR uh, onto the, the where clause. Uh, third tip, 
checking for the existence of record. I, I chose to include this because I see this a lot in code reviews as um, a, a chance for improvement. So I think maybe it's a method that not uh, everyone is aware of. So frequently, people need to, to do some guard clause or something based on the existence of some record based on, on query criteria. One of the common uh, ways I see is to use where and then uh, chain on any at the end, which works fine. Uh, another method I see is to uh, do a count and then check that the count is greater than zero. So the downside of these two, um, apart from not being super explicit, uh, is that uh, it will actually go and count everything. Uh, so to check if there's a single record uh, matching your criteria, it will go and count all the records matching the criteria. So what you can do instead is to use the exists uh, method, and you can just pass it the, the criteria the biggest benefit to me is that uh, it's more explicit. I want to, to check if this uh, record exists in the database. Uh, but the other nicety is that uh, it generates a SQL query that basically short circuits itself when it finds the first record. So it only needs to go and find one of them. So the fourth tip is um, how you can create on-the-fly through relations uh, using the joins method. So here I've set up another super simple uh, domain model uh, where you have uh, offices uh, having many employees uh, and each employee has one role. Um, so here you might not actually want a through relationship because your office might not have roles. It might not be super um, clear what that means. So you can actually use the joins method and you can pass it a hash like this. Uh, and it will join on both these tables. So we will essentially have a on-the-fly through relationship that you can use in your query. Um, so the, the generated SQL looks like this. Uh, First, it will join the employees onto the offices, uh, and then it will join the roles onto the employees. And now you can query out uh, offices based on properties of the roles of the people working there. The last and final tip uh, is how you can merge queries with the merge method. And I think this, this is very powerful for the longest time I only thought the merge method was like a poor man's uh, concatenation thingy that you could use to uh, merge together different scopes and still get a relation out. But that's actually not what it does at all. Uh, so here we have uh, an even simpler domain model. Uh, we have books and the books belong to an author. And now we can do uh, something like this. We, we join the author onto the book, uh, and then we select where the author uh, is a Nobel Prize winner. And this looks fairly straightforward, uh, but you can also do it like this. All right, first it's the generated SQL. You can also do it like this. And now you might ask, what, what is the purpose of this? this um, this doesn't look much different from the, the previous version. Uh, but we must remember that this uh, query about authors being Nobel Prize winners is very simple in this case. Uh, but in reality, this query can be arbitrarily complex. Um, so you might want to uh, select some clients based on some uh, different uh, complex criteria, which means you can now uh, contain that, that implementation detail inside your client model as a scope uh, instead of duplicating it into to other places. So what Merge does, it's actually uh, 
those and auto magically merges your SQL qu queries together. So it merges the SQL queries, not the actual results. And this is just to show that the, the generated SQL query by using merge is identical to the one where we hard-coded the, the criteria inside the query. Right, so now that I told you how to found, find records, I will give you a one non-random tip uh, how to find a job. Um, because we're hiring uh, at Speakerbox. <laughs> uh, the caveat is that um, we are only hiring seniors at the moment. We had tons of applications for, uh, uh, for junior developers and found some, some really good people. Uh, but now we really need uh, more seniors as well. So the reason you should join is because uh, we care a lot about code uh, in Tinkerbox. Uh, and in fact, uh, test coverage is one of our KPIs. So we currently have 98% test coverage on our uh, client projects. Um, we also believe in giving back, which is why uh, one of our KPIs is uh, community outreach. So I'm actually racking up some points as well uh, while I'm here. <laughs> Uh, we also work hard and we play harder. Uh, we play a lot of football, uh, we play board games, rock band. Anything that can be played is played. <laughs> uh, if this sounds, sounds interesting and you, you think that you're a senior level developer, then uh, hop onto the website, tinkerbox.com.sg, uh, click into the careers section and then you can uh, send us uh, an application from there. Thank you.